Hey everybody, um, since we're doing a new build soon and uh, we got the tabletop guide up already, um, I want to talk to you about testing outside of the case and why it's important um, and <laughs> why if you're looking for help on the Discord, the first thing we ask you is are you testing outside of the case? Um, it's important for a lot of reasons. The first one I want to go over is that you have really, really good visibility of your parts and your components and the way that they're installed. It's super important to build everything first. As you can see here, uh, this is a micro ATX X8 SIL motherboard. Nothing too fancy. I'm just using it for a demonstration in this of this video. Um, but I've got my RAM installed, my CPU installed on the socket, heatsink on top, and then the heatsink plugged in, and that's it. Um, that's all we need to test test the build. Um, I guess you will need a VGA connector, you know, to your display and whatever. But that's yeah, you, know, you can do that. Um, so visibility-wise, we can see everything that's going on here. And when you're building on a table, instead of building inside the case, so like normally, what a lot of people would do is put the motherboard in the case, screw it in. Uh, put the processor in, put the RAM in, put the heatsink on. Well, what happens when you have a problem? It's it's just not easy to see what's going on. It's not easy to visually check and inspect different things, make sure the RAM seated correctly, or make sure that the heatsink's making good contact with the CPU. Um, so, a couple considerations there. Um, another reason is. Um, Servers don't really use standard form factors as far as uh, like consumer parts and, and if we're trying to use a consumer case with a server build or um, really honestly it, it doesn't even matter if you have a server case, the standoffs aren't going to be in the right position 99% of the time. So what you have to do is remove the standoffs, make sure they line up with each and every standoff hole on the motherboard and then make sure that there's no stray standoffs underneath the board shorting out any of these contacts underneath because if you do that then it'll, the board could possibly not boot a ramp stick might not work um, you could actually damage the components something like that so these contacts down here are all live and the standoffs keep it from contacting the bottom of the board contacting with the metal plate of the uh, the case so that's the second reason. Um, that's also kind of a visual thing too. You do want to make sure that all the standoffs are correct. And um, you know, if if the third reason is kind of an all-encompassing one, if something's bad, I mean, it's just you got to take it out and pull it apart anyway. So like, why not test everything while you can? Right in here, right in front of you, on the table your hands right here, you're not bent over into a case working on something. Um, you can access everything super easily and yeah, I mean it's just easier to work in. And honestly there's no downside to testing outside of the case first. I do this for every single build that I that I make and um, it saves me a lot of headaches and it lets me play around with the hardware and do things like that. So. It's just a, it's just something you gotta do, and if you're looking for help in the tech support section, or in the build chat section, hardware, anything like that in the Discord, or if you post on Reddit, we're gonna say, well, are you building inside the case, or are you building outside the case? And if you say, well, I just built it inside, and you know, I threw it together, and I was hoping everything would work, and I mean, to be honest, a lot of you, this is gonna be your first server build or second, but it's not the same as consumer hardware. And even consumer hardware, I do the same thing. I, I just build, build it here, hook up the power supply, turn it on, test it, make sure everything's good. Because if I got a bad CPU or something, I don't want to have to have it all in the case. And like, you know, say you have a more complicated build and you've got like a, a water cooler, so you got it mounted to the case and things like that. It's just just test it outside, and it's just easier. So that's why we recommend testing it outside the case. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask us. But it's um, 
it's a pretty good idea to do it. Now, what I'll say about uh, about everything you need, I think I went over this earlier, but really you just need the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and the heatsink. And of course you do want to make sure that, that there's a heatsink on it. Feel free to test them with the stock passive heatsinks like these guys. You can test them with this. Now, I would recommend if you're going to do any extended testing besides a, you know, function check, so where you just turn it on, you see if it boots up into the BIOS and then, you know, text the RAM, text the CPU, everything like that. That's just a function check. So if you're going to do more than that and you're going to do like install the OS and everything, make sure everything's fine before you put it in the case. Um, and you're going to use these passive coolers. Take a fan. This is kind of a big fan for this, but take a fan, set it on top of the cooler, get a little bit of airflow going over that. I think I actually have a. Yeah, I got an 80 millimeter here. 80 is really good for this. Just set this guy on top. And just let it, you know, just plug it into one of the fan fan slots. Get some air flowing over it. Um, another consideration is the chipset. You want to try to get a little bit of airflow over this guy if you're going to be doing anything for extended periods of time. Um, on this motherboard in particular, it doesn't run too hot, but a lot of the Supermicro X8 and X9 boards and the Gigabyte boards, this area near the PCI Express um, does run very warm, so you do want to get a little bit of airflow over that. Um, other than that, bench testing is super easy. Uh, we're just, I, mean, I got a power supply here, this is just a 400 watt EVGA, nothing special. Um, and on this board we have our 24 pin CPU and our 8 pin EPS sorry about that so we take our 24 pin and there's a little tab on this side and there's the locking piece here so just goes in like this Make sure it locks in. Take our 8 pin EPS. There's a locking tab on the top. This guy does split in half to two 4 pins, but this is a full 8 pin. And I'm just going to plug this guy in. And then uh, this power supply doesn't have an on off switch. Oops. This power supply does not have an on off switch. So it really just turns on and off by plugging in the cord. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now. The motherboard might turn on on its own, depending on the setting that it's set in the BIOS. Yep, and there it goes. So we have a green power light here, and it's turned on. It'll display out to a monitor and everything like that. Um, now on these super micro boards, okay, it's beeping at me. So on these super micro boards, this is the front panel header right here. The two to the left or the bottom, so this is the back of the, the board, I would call this the top because in an ATX case, this will be the back, this will be the top, this will be the bottom, and this will be the front. So the two on the bottom right here are your power switch. And like you saw what I did there, you just take a screwdriver, anything conductive, and you want to carefully bridge those two, and it'll turn on. Um, I'm going to link something in the description of this video below, and it'll be a power supply uh, like jumper cable and it's gonna have a reset and a couple of LEDs on it um, you can use that I just bought a couple I lost my two that I had so I'm just stuck using the screwdriver method for now um, that said there's they're only like five bucks so it's I think it's a two pack for like five or six dollars so pick up one of those super easy for bench testing um, the other thing to consider with bench testing I didn't think about until just now if you need to reset your CMOS or CMOS, whichever way you, you want to say it, or you know, reset your BIOS, that's not always the easiest thing to do. 
And on this board, sometimes it's just easier to take the battery out. So doing that inside a case with all the wires and everything is going to be a pain. Um, moving these jumpers where you can't reach them very easily is a pain. So having it right here is super nice. Um, if there's SAS on board, there might be a physical jumper where you, it's disabled one way or enabled another. Um, just, you know, things like that. There's no downside to testing outside of the case. It takes a little bit of time just to set everything up, but it will familiarize, <laughs> I can't say that word. Uh, you will be more familiar with your motherboard and its layout and its setup, and it will overall just make your building experience a lot, a lot nicer. So if you have any questions about this, shoot me a message in Discord, comment, uh, you know, subscribe, do all that fun stuff that people beg you to do at the end of every video. Um, thanks to all the Patreon supporters, and thanks to everyone uh, for supporting me in general. And I'll see you guys when the build guide comes out on Monday. Um, I think this is going to be my last piece of build-related content for the weekend. I might have a headphone review or something like that just to you know, keep things moving. But um, this is going to be the last piece of uh, hardware-related content for the next two days. So look forward to seeing you uh, at the new build, and we're going to be very busy over the next week. So we'll see you guys then.